What's up guys, it's Jacob from Fuel Tech USA and today we're gonna talk all about pressure sensors and what you're gonna use for what and your application. All right, so starting out, we have a zero to 150 PSI sensor. This is the most common one we sell, most common one on a race car. Uh, most guys can use this for fuel pressure and oil pressure, uh, coolant pressure, back pressure, wastegate pressure. There's a ton of, ton of uses for this one. If you wanna use it for back pressure, we even have a really nice back pressure dampening canister. It's got a nice filter element in there to help the sensor live longer. It also kind of helps with smoothing the reading. It's not directly from the line to it. You would just thread this thing in the top, use some kind of thread sealant, and run your line from the exhaust right into here, and that'll be a nice back pressure dampening canister. Something else really cool about these pressure sensors is it's got the pin out on the side. So A is zero volts, that's ground. B is voltage in, which this is a five volt sensor. All of these sensors are five volt sensors. And then C is the output voltage that will go to one of your white inputs on the ECU. And then around the top of the sensor, it even has kind of embossed in there A, B, and C. So there should be no mix-up pinning this thing out. It makes it easier for you guys. The next one we have is the 0 to 300 PSI sensor. Depending on the engine, you may use this for oil pressure. If it's something that makes really big oil pressure, big nitrous motor, some of the big Hemis, they make more than 150 on startup. Uh, you also may use it for fuel pressure in a really big boost application. Let's say you're going to run 90 pounds of base pressure and 60 pounds of boost on the top. That's 150. So we need something a little, little more range, so 300 will get that done. Some guys were commonly using these for transmission line pressure and converter pressure, although most have moved to a 500 now. Depending on the transmission manufacturer, you may top out a 300 sensor. Maybe consult your trans builder before. And something else that's nice about this, if you have to run a 300 for fuel pressure or oil pressure, and you can get away with it with the transmission, it's easy to get one or two spares, and it's just one pressure sensor is everything on the car. I wouldn't recommend this for wastegate pressure. Almost any pressure sensor on the market, you're gonna have a 1% variance on if it's accurate or not. So on a zero to 300, that's three PSI. That's, that's a decent amount when it comes to boost control. So the 150 is better suited for that. All right, the next one is the zero to 500 PSI sensor. I kind of touched on it earlier. A lot of the transmission manufacturers are preferring you to move to this for converter pressure, line pressure, anything transmission related. And that's really its most common use. So our next one is a zero to 1500 PSI sensor. This is most commonly used. I see on nitrous bottle pressure. If you've got two bottles, it's good to have two. You can monitor each bottle separately. If you're really technical and you want to look at jet pressure, block pressure, something like that, like closer to the manifold on a nitrous application, same thing, zero to 1500. And depending on the application, you can use it for brake pressure, but I more commonly see a zero to 3000 used. So our next one up is a zero to 3000 PSI sensor. This is most commonly used on brake pressure. Some guys I've seen, they use it as a wheelie bar pressure sensor but brake pressure is probably going to be your most common application for the zero to 3000. So you guys may have noticed there's a black box with a couple of sensors over here. Um, any of our absolute pressure sensors, something that can read vacuum, we do the black box, makes it easier for us, makes it easier for you. The first one we're going to talk about is the PanVac sensor. It can read about 15 PSI of vacuum and about 15 PSI of pressure. I most commonly see it on nitrous applications. It's super critical for the tuning on them, but it can be useful on any application, turbo, blower, whatever. It's almost like a good monitor of engine health. It's gonna measure how much pressure we have in the crankcase, how much blow by. So even with a turbo or blower car, you could benefit, log this thing over time and you can catch something going away before something bad happens. The next one is our 10 bar map sensor. This thing will read same, almost 15 PSI of vacuum and 135 pounds of boost. So this is more common on something really big boost, something you're gonna to top out the seven bar map sensor in the ECU. Um, usually it's a really big boost outlaw turbo car or tractor pulling. You'll see a lot of these being used. So everything I was showing you guys here, these are all the pro series line of pressure sensors we have. 
These are all really nice, really high-end sensors, made in England, super accurate, big lifespan. I've always liked these sensors. We do have another option for you guys, though, that I wanted to show you. So this is our newer pressure sensor. It's still a really nice sensor, and it's gonna be available in all the ranges. It's zero to 150 for now. We're gonna have all the ranges very, very soon. And this is a more entry-level version for you guys. It's a little cheaper cost. It's still a really good sensor, but just to give you guys an option on something super high-end or something that still works really good. Something else I wanted to mention to you guys and show you guys, this is our remote pressure sensor mounting block. You can screw into four pressure sensors here. And these, they don't share channels in size. These are all independent and you can run a hose or line, something like that to the bottom of it. And you can remote mount these sensors. That will greatly increase the lifespan versus mounting it directly on the engine, directly on the transmission, something like that. And this is just uh, one more thing we offer you guys to help get the most life you can out of your sensors. All right, guys, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about what pressure sensor to use for what application on your race car. If you still have any questions, reach out to the sales team. The tech team will get you taken care of. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And leave a comment below this and we can do some more Tech Tuesday videos for you. And we'll see you next Tuesday.